When an organization plans a meeting, there's often an agenda that's organized by a team or key administrator in order to prioritize efficiency. What is often ignored is that how a meeting is conducted affects how people are listened to and valued, which directly impacts what work is done, how that work is done, and by whom. In this episode of Lab Life, we'll look at ways of running a meeting that encourage collective decision making and challenge the traditional top-down hierarchy model of leadership. I think from an organizational perspective, it's hard to operate a lab like this within a framework designed to foster a different type of science. There's no such thing as humanity, right? Humanity is like a settler white concept um, that imagines people to be like you. That's not true. People aren't like you. No, they're so different you can't even imagine. There's no such thing as everybody. You cannot be obliged to everyone. You start with your relations and you trust that those ethics will travel out. I work through my relations here, the community I live in, and the people I talk to, the people I'm obliged to. I need to be able to name them because you can't be obliged to someone you can't really name. Being obligated to one another means that when we gather for a meeting, we prioritize a set of intentional protocols that help us to reinforce our values as we share our perspectives with one another. All right. So here are uh, some of our the guiding sort of principles and ethics and rules for this gathering. Number one, your story, your choice. Uh, what that means is you only tell stories here that are appropriate to this group and no one is asking to open a vein, asking you to open a vein and bleed for us for our entertainment or education. That's especially important for Black, Indigenous and people of color who are very, and women and trans folks, etc., who are often asked to educate others with their stories. One diva, one mic. That basically means one person's talks at a time, but it also means, uh, which is much easier to do on Zoom, but it also means that if you haven't spoke, to speak up, and if you've been speaking too much, to step back. And that's because both speaking too much and not speaking at all uh, can be burdens on the collective. Don't yuck my yum. Uh, so this means no nagging. It means if people make an offer and tell a story and put something on the table that you yes and that story, you don't know but that story. Um, of course, if someone offers something that's that's violent or painful or hurtful, it means calling them in instead of calling them out. Call them into those relations, work through accountability, um, as opposed to ostracization on the first kick of the can. Uh, mind your trauma manners. Yes, we might talk about uh, colonialism, slavery, rape, these sorts of things, but don't be cavalier when you talk about that. Right? There are survivors in this room, and so be accountable to them and, and to their lives and stories, right? So we're asking for accountability as opposed to like harmful charisma when you talk about these things. And of course, what happens in Vegas stays in Vegas. So this is a pretty big lab rule, again, because um, the lab is a pretty special place. Uh, but filming is a little different in that we've already asked to share your stories outside of Vegas. Uh, the consent forms are to get to do that. But if you're sharing something and you don't want it to circulate beyond this group, just say off record and we'll, we'll make sure it doesn't circulate. All right, Emily and then da, 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 Catherine. Hi everyone, my name is Emily. I'm currently calling you from Mi'kmaq, which is the unceded ancestral territory of Mi'kmaq. And I don't know if I mentioned already, but my pronouns are she and her. Lab meetings start with introductions, as each lab member states their name, their gender pronouns, and their land relations. Hi everyone, uh, my name's Elise. My pronouns are she and her. Um, I'm a settler from Newfoundland and Labrador. Good afternoon everyone. Um, my name is Edward and uh, my pronouns are he and him. I'm a student in the geography department who is currently a visitor on the uh, ancestral homelands of the Biota. All right, Charlie then Dominique. In order to foster open dialogue during lab meetings, we do what's called round robin. So round robins are part of every part of everything we do in the lab. So what happens if you don't do a round robin, and Jesse and I were in a meeting where this happened, um, people who feel comfortable speaking out, speak out. So like Michif, women, uh, white men, uh, senior scholars, but not undergrads, not guests, not right these sorts of things. So what happens with the round robin is it gives everyone space to speak 
number one. But number two, you start understanding that your thinking is part of a community. So even if I say something and everyone basically agrees with me, if people then say it over and over again with their own spin on it, that starts looking a little bit different. Everyone's allowed to say pass. If I say your name and you're like, no, nah, then just say pass and we'll keep going. Sorry, Je uh, Nadia, then Jesse. Temperature checks are quick check-ins about how everyone is feeling. It's a way to quickly gauge where all group members are at and to create a space for all of us to bow out if we need to. We'll just do our usual check-in. Just one word, how you doing? If you had to pick a word about what's your, what, what's, what's the thing that is you today? What is that thing? I'm a bit stressed and burnt out. Uh, I'm pretty drained. <laughs> stressed and a little under the weather. Uh, I'm also pretty tired and a little stressed. I'm uh, pretty drained. Disconnected and unfocused. Given the state of most of you, I would like to propose that maybe you shouldn't be in a meeting right now and you could maybe have a paid hour off. How does that sound to folks with the fingers? Yes, mm, no, yes, yes. Okay, so I propose that if you wanna go, go. Take a paid hour off. If you wanna stick around, you can stick around. We can do a version of this with a small and intimate group. That's fine, it'll still work. You can trust your lab mates um, to, to do things that are good. If you showed up, but even though you were exhausted, thank you so much. Now go, If but you know the rules, if you're exhausted, tired, or, or heartbroken, go home. Thanks, Max. You're welcome. Thanks, have a good meeting, guys. See ya. Yeah, thanks so much, guys. Yep. All right. Good, people are taking it, that is your job. Go away, that is your job. And that, that was lab in action, so perfect. This is a good group. This is a legit group. All right, so. It's very hard for me to treat my students um, and the lab as a place for extracting value because I know how brutal that can be. People working for free, you're like, mm, don't think that's cool. Internships, not paying people for that, nope, right? And I've worked, since I was 12 years old, I've worked multiple jobs, usually at the same time. It's only in the past few years I've had one job at a time. and it's, So I don't take that for granted. It's a space where people are making a real and tangible effort to do science differently. It's what a lab can look like if you try and you put your mission statement at the heart of everything that you do as opposed to just making a mission statement. Because everyone has a mission statement, but very rarely do people actually perform that mission statement. And I really appreciate that, that Clear does that in everything they do. They're not just words on a website. It's really helped me to, to think about what it means to have my own lab. And I really hope that uh, my lab can be, uh, make even just a fraction of the impact that Clear has made it, on you know the people that Max has been in contact with. Gathering together for meetings can provide space to listen and support one another, which is shown with the visual signal of wavy fingers pointing up. Meetings also provide space for questions, which is shown with the visual signal of wavy fingers pointing sideways, and as a space to signal disagreement, wavy fingers pointing down, or with the closed fist for a more nuanced voting system called fist to five. It's horrible, I wish it was called something else. Up sideways and down doesn't do the sort of work that one, two, three, four, five, and fist would do. Fist is like, no, like, no, absolutely not. This must be addressed. So it's basically what this, what the down thingy went. All right, Nadia's got the fist. What's up, Nadia? When we are obligated to one another, we value the protocols that make space for all our perspectives to be expressed and also addressed. Five, 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 five. It's loved, it's loved. So if you keep ignoring your relations, they're just not gonna work properly and you're gonna end up with very stymied sort of senses of obligations. That's the core, that's the core of who we are as a people, um, to be relational. It's absolutely our obligation to understand those relations and to honor those relations. And so there's particular protocol, there's particular ways in which you you go about um, honoring those relations and, and, and continuously understanding those relations.